Sup, bitch. You stupid. Bitch, you stupid. On today's episode of Let's Distract Ourselves from Our Inevitable Demise with Card Tricks, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a half-baked idea. If you guys haven't noticed, I've dropped a couple of these from time to time. Why? Because I think they're interesting ideas. They're nice thought experiments. They say, hey, not only am I giving you guys a little bit of a half-baked idea, but also I'm receiving ideas from you guys. So it's interactive. I want to see what you guys have to say about this particular item. Now this, this is nothing new. This is just a, a little bit of a cover for something that we all do but this is where you guys are going to take it and shape it just like uh, an underdeveloped baby you could turn it and mold its head in whatever it is that you want you want to turn it into a football huh you want a little bit of a stewie meme well guess what you could do that you want to turn your son's head into a basketball it's entirely possible okay it's got to wait till they're malleable so for this we're going to be using uh, the uh, standard bin wang playing cards and uh, we're going to cut to a little bit of a crotch cam so it's a fairly simple idea all we're going to do is have the spectator touch a card let's say they happen to uh not touch that one and they touch this one <laughs> because the cards are very slippery so they happen to have touched the joker well in this case we could just take that joker we put it in the middle of this half and we could have the spectator shuffle this half as much as they want because you don't want them to even know the location as to that particular card now guess what at this point you could do anything you want with this card because it's on top silly so if you want you could do the little bit of a pants up adjustment move that i've developed where you adjust your pants and while i'm adjusting my pants guess what i'm doing i'm ditching that card in my pocket so right now that card could have been loaded in a card to wallet it could have been loaded i don't know inside of a sock that i keep in my back pocket for no reason there are many options as to where this card could go but let's go over the actual technical aspect of what took place and then we'll cover ideas as to what you could do potentially with this uh with this card so first things first is the actual technique itself we're gonna have the spectator touch any card they want Whatever card they touch, we're going to out jog, which is a fancy term for stick out. I think this one goes back to Hitler. I'm not sure. But uh, the card sticks out approximately half its length. And here we're going to do a little bit of tomfoolery. I'm going to keep this card face up for the sake of explanation. I suggest you don't do that because if you do do that, then they're going to know what's going on. Um, so here what we're going to do is we're going to eyesight one card above the card they touch. So in this case, they touch the King of Clubs. All I'm going to do is that as I'm going to square everything up, I'm going to keep a break above the card that is above their card. So in this case, when I close everything up right now, I have a pinky break above this face down card. So now is when I actually get into the move because I'm going to show the spectator the card they picked. At the same time, I'm going to take these cards and just hold them in my right hand in what's commonly known as Biddle Grip. This is definitely uh, a, hit, a Hitler technique here it goes back to the um, i think the art school days maybe uh, but you're going to hold the cards in this way and you're going to show the spectator the card they touched now of course remember because the card is facing the other way they would actually see what card it is so here you're going to show it to them and remember there's also a card there so if you happen to use your little dirty finger to press this in right now when you bring the the hand back to a, a natural parallel state guess what this is no longer their card. This is now an X card. So at this point, you could take this card, you could have them shove it in this half, you could have them mix this half up, and you could pretty much do anything you want with this card. Uh, but that's the actual technique itself. Let's go over what it looks like in practice. So one more time, the card is sticking out approximately half its length. We're going to get a pinky break above the card that's above it. We're going to square up the pack. We're going to lift up all these cards as we show the card to the spectator. We're going to square this puppy up with our forefinger again aimed at the spectator we're going to bring the hand down and we're going to use our dirty little thumb to insert this card into the right-handed half just like this 
So we're going to push this card in flush and we're going to have the spectator mix up the cards and we can match actions to suit here. So we can tell the spectator, go ahead, sir, mix the cards so just like this. Of course, what am I doing? I'm keeping the card on top. So I'm, I'm mixing the card on top. I'm keeping it by putting pressure with my fingertips as I shuffle. Here's the extra special Michael Omar angle. Michael Omar probably didn't have a body as sculpted as me, but alas, he can't have everything. So at this point, you're just keeping that card on top. And now you could really insert this card anywhere you want. You could just uh, adjust your pants here. And all I'm doing is taking this card and just putting it inside of my back pocket, just like that, as the spectators mix in the deck. Just as simple as that. Again, all the attention is focused here. You could pretty much do whatever it is that you want with this card. Now, that being said, you don't necessarily have to ditch the card. You could put the card maybe face up. So at this point, you could do a bra reversal and put that card face up in the deck just like this. So now when you take the half back, you could just drop this on top, give the spectator the deck to hold and have them imagine the card turned face down. And of course, you have a little bit of a miracle. That's something you could do. But more likely than not, what you're going to end up using this technique for is a no palm card to wallet. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend stuttering as much as I just did, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, just putting the card in the pocket and being like, ha, look, your card's in my pocket. I feel like it would definitely need to go inside of one of those uh, fancy magic wallets that you find, but you could put it inside and uh, definitely do it without having to uh, rush yourself because the spectator's attention is focused on you. So you could just, you know, pretend to pull up your pants here, ditch the card in the wallet, come up, have the spectator shuffle the other half just for the sake of fairness. And of course, at this point, your hands are empty and you could reach inside of your pocket, take out the wallet and show the card inside of the wallet. That's just a little bit of an idea. Another interesting idea that you could do here is uh, you could Mercury card fold the card so that while the attention is on the spectator shuffling their half with supposedly their card in it, you could do a little bit of a Mercury card fold on the card that they picked. So remember that card would actually be on top of the deck. You could just turn the packet face up. I'm not gonna do the Mercury card fold here, but you could look it up. You're just essentially folding the card. And now at this point, you're gonna have a folded card in your palm, you could hand this to the spectator. As you hand it, you could ditch it, and now you have empty hands. You see this? You could show dirty, empty hands to the spectator. Now, I know what you're saying. Hey, pick cake, how am I going to retrieve the card that's now folded in my back pocket? Uh, shut up, all right? Your mom didn't love you because you asked questions like that. So here's what you do. Let's say you want the card to end up in your shoe, right? Here's the move. You're gonna reach for your shoe just like this. You're gonna reach for your left shoe. I don't know if we could get a wide angle here but you're gonna reach for your left shoe and pull it off at the same time. Look where my hand goes. My hand immediately goes to the middle of my ass crack. That's exactly where the card is. So as I take off the shoe, I could just simply reach into my pocket, palm the folded card, and now I could just simply go inside, pretend to take the card out, hand it to them, and it's a miracle. And the choreography is perfect because it's just literally this right here. And this is done from empty hands. So you could show your hands empty, you could reach for your shoe, grab the card, pull out the folded card, hand it to them, and then pass off whatever virus or germs you keep inside of your dirty, disgusting, crusted ass foot. So there's just a couple ideas. Those are just a couple ideas with this particular move. What I want you guys to do though, is I want you guys to uh, leave it in a little bit of the description. What would you do? What do you do with this particular move, huh? Are you gonna turn it into a card to shoe, are you gonna turn it into uh, something better? Who knows, probably not. But what I want you guys to do is just leave it in the comments below. I really hate this it gets me angrier than a fucking magician at a birthday party doing hippity hop rabbits the coronavirus really got me here guys i've suppressed so many coughs i'm not gonna leave a little bit of a blooper reel here at the end with all the coughs that i've had to edit out but suffice to say that uh, there's enough to make a, a nice little compilation of, uh, of coughs if you guys are into that sort of thing. Make sure to do all the things that people do. Check out the Pig Cake Magic Academy, $5 a month, two videos every single week going over everything you need to become uh, a, a super great magician. I think 400 videos already, check it out. Very clever for me to leave the uh, advert to the uh, pretty much the way I make my living on the end of the video. So statistically, most people aren't gonna see this, but you know what, the very few that do see it, they're gonna be, um, well, impressed, I guess, with the content. That's it. I'm going to go and... Uh, I don't know. I think I finally ran out of things to say at the end of the video. So I'm just going to stand here for 20 seconds while the little things pop up. And uh, hopefully that's going to be sufficient time. You know? Not really... Uh,
not really a jokester. I hate when people put me on the spot and say, hey, man, figure something out. Be funny. Show me something. Bitch, 